this video we are going to make sure that our player can respawn after he's killed and that we can attack our monsters after they evade because we have some problems with that right now um, also right now when the monster kills us or the enemy kills us it will run back to his position very fast because it's not moving correctly we need to make sure that it moves by using the rigid body only and I can show you what I mean by that if we open up our where is it? our enemy state and our evade state Then you'll see that it's using this, uh, where is it, um, yeah, this to move. And we don't want to do that because we are already moving by setting the direction. Because inside character, I think, we have something where we move right there. And this is also moving us, so it's moving very fast back to its original position when it's evading. So let's go to evade state and delete this line because we don't need that at all. And then we can save and go back and see that he moves slower back to his original position now. Let's try to aggro him one more time and then here attacks us and kills us and then he walks slow back to his position. He's still walking over water and everything um, that is intended for now and now he's yeah doing like that because he's not moving towards the specific position. So we also need to make sure that he can go back to idle. So let's say if distance is less than 0 0.1 instead, because it's very uh, hard to get close to the right, to, to 0, when you're not moving towards something. So it might be 0 0.03 away from the original position, so let's just do that. I think I already saved it, let's see here. Let him kill me again, and now it should go back to original, uh, back to the normal idle when he gets back to the position. And there we go. So one more thing we need to fix with him is the fact if we select the enemy, let's try to stop and run again, we'll see that the enemy parent's position is minus 14.42. Okay, this means right now we should be moving the parent. So if I do like this, his parent position changes when he pathfinds. However, when he's done pathfinding, it stays down here. So the parent is still down here. And that's not good. Because the parent needs to move back to the original position. And that's because the rigid body on the enemy is sitting on the enemy still. If you already have moved it to the enemy parent, fine. Um, then you don't need to do the step. But I would need to do this. So I need to select the enemy parent. And add the rigid body 2D. Go to my enemy right click copy component. And remove the component from the enemy. And paste it on the enemy parent. I'm not sure if we did that earlier. I think we did. Um, but I might not have saved it in the prefab or something, so let's just save. And if we run it now... Oops, we need to set it of course, so if we select the enemy, you'll see that we don't have any... Oh, there is my rigid body. So take the enemy parent and drag onto there, so it has a reference to that rigid body. And I also need to make sure inside the enemy... And where do we have it? We have something my no we are not setting up anything health sprite renderer no let's just try to character and see if we have any references to it just want to make sure we don't um set it by mistake let's see here um find references nope that's fine okay so let's see here Now the enemy should still move as it did before to my position and attack me and move back to its original position. Um, and let's see here, the enemy parent has changed this value back to the original one, almost the original one, it's as close as we can get. Just want to see it again, so if we aggro him. It's 12, and then when he kills me and walks back, yeah, it changes. So now it moves the right element, doesn't only move the child element. With that done, we will need to make the player respawn. To do that, we need to open up our character script, or not character, the player actually. Let's find him there. And then we need to make an, um, what is it called, a coroutine. So let's see what we want to do, that doesn't really matter. 
So public i enumerator respawn. Respawn is going to set the sprite renderer that enable to false. We're going to hide the player when he's done uh, so that we don't see the original, um, what's it called, the original idle animation after he's dead. We only want to show the idle animation when he's respawned. And then we say yield, return, new wait for seconds. Oh, not in the frame, but wait for seconds. Let's wait five seconds until respawn. This is our respawn timer, basically. You can make a variable if you want to. And then we say health.initialize. Initial health. That. And then we say my mana. Dot initialize. There. <coughs> Sorry about that. Um, and then we say transform the parent position. So we need a start position, a spawn position. Let's do that. Um, we have initial mana here. Let's make a private vector two. Call it initial position. This is our initial position. We need to set that, of course. Um, did I finish that off? Yes. So then we need to set it. Now we're using it, we set it after. And then we say my sprite renderer dot enable true. Okay, so that's the respawn. Besides that, we also need to trigger um, our respawn animation. It's not an animation, we just need to get back to the original state you'll see in a moment. Respawn, like that. So now we, while our animator I set the trigger, respawn trigger and then we need to make sure that we set the initial position so he's going to respawn where he starts let's see when we awake this is set default so let's do it here so initial position so the initial position is our parents position and I think we're also setting the parents position when we are respawning trains from the parent position yes there we go so that's the code. We can go back here and oh, select our player. There. And open the animator. Go to the death layer. And we create a new empty state and call it respawn. Then we transition from die to respawn and from respawn to alive. And the transition from die to respawn simply just have to stay as it is keep it at these values and then we have the transition from respawn to alive and we don't need any exit time or anything there but we need to add a condition the condition we are going to add needs a new parameter with a trigger called respawn remember that's the parameter we are setting here my animator set trigger and then we select it over here and we need to do something extra now because our respawn needs a state so add behavior and let's just say new script actually and call it respawn behavior and let it open up inside respawn behavior we need to use the on state enter wow can i uncomment that Okay, I need to save this and close it open again, I guess. Let's try one more time. There's problems apparently, so I couldn't change the code. There we go. Okay. Then we say player. Mm, do you want to do like that? Actually, I can say um, player dot my instance dot start protein and then I want to say player dot my instance dot respawn yeah so I want to start the respawn coroutine here and save 
and when it's done thinking, we should be able to. So if we have compiled errors, but let's see here what it is. There, okay, I mixed it up. I messed up a scope there. Let's try to save and see what it says now. <coughs> go so now there are no compiler errors and we should still have that um, state on there so let's try to run this and see what happens so now when I die I should disappear and spawn on my start position and he walks back I'm, go I'm gone for five seconds and then I respond. Okay, so something's wrong here. It didn't run up, respawn. It didn't jump up to a live here, which should jump up to a live. So let's see here. Oh, I misspelled this. Like that. So it should, if you spell everything correctly, it should jump up to being alive again instead of being in respawn. So let's try again. And five seconds now we're alive and it's not in respawn. Okay. So let's see. Now I just respawned and the skeleton evaded. Let's see what happens if I attack it now. So he still goes to me now. And he attacks me as it did before and he can kill me again. And he evades and I respawn. Go. And remember this is just intentional right now to walk back directly to the position. So that's actually what I want to do in this video. Again, keep testing this out and let me know if you find any bugs. Um, so, thank you very much for watching.